All right, everybody, here we are. We're live. It's my third time today. You're seeing my mug. Let's welcome this person, though. And I, I can't wait to get into it with her because there's so much to talk about, so many years to cover. And uh, honestly, I've been waiting like six, seven years to make this interview happen. So let's welcome to the show the one, the only, Miss Claire Cunningham. Claire, how the hell are you doing? I'm so good. I'm so sorry you had to wait this long. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's 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 crazy. It's funny. Um, like going back to the, the Thunder Mother days, um, I guess you guys were doing promo for uh, Road Fever, I think it was. And I got the email from your old PR person at the at the old record label. And um it was the choice between you and Georgia. And I was like, uh, yeah, Claire. And they came back and like, yeah, sorry, Claire's booked. I'm like, all right, well, I'll, I'm going to interview Georgia then. And I did mm -hmm. and had a, had a blast and was a big fan. So, um, you know, I want to get into all that world. But the funny thing was, you know, uh, before I even ended up moving to Nashville, you know, you've been here for a few years longer than I have. Mm -hmm. And um, you started doing uh, the whole bombers and sleeves thing she yeah. got that six one vibe going on so cool right <laughs> <laughs> it's birthday today i know right how about that so the the funny thing was uh, i get this message on on instagram about a month ago from claire and we had not met met yet we have not talked yet and i was like holy shit claire <laughs> and then I see she listened to my interview with her replacement, Guernica, and we talked about Claire. And uh, yeah, so it, it, this whole thing started. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it really was. And the funnier thing was, and I think I told you when you first messaged me, um, I, I guess it was like two years ago. So I've been here for two and a half years. Yeah. And I was at, we were at the Planet Fitness one day, and you came in and you were on the treadmill in front of me. And I was like, Oh shit! It's Claire. And then I texted your your old PR person, who I'm very tight with. I'm like, yeah. guess who's in front of me on the treadmill? They're like, who? I'm like, Claire. He's like, Claire from Thunder Mother. I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, tell her I said hello. I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna just. I don't know her. I'm like, I'm not gonna be that guy. Yeah, you should have. That would have been so fun. But hey, it's it's meant to be. There you go. So now we finally get to to sit down and actually talk. And, and learn all about you uh, because you do have a tremendous story, um, mm -hmm. a hell of a story. And I can't wait to, to really get into it and ask you all these questions because yeah. there's a lot that I don't know that, you know, once I start doing this research, I'm like getting blown away by like, uh, hello, all these freaking awards you're winning here in Nashville. Like I had no idea. Like <laughs> it, it's like, Christmas time for you with all these awards. You know, a lot of people always say like, oh, it's amazing with the, the awards. And, you know, for me, every award is just a little nugget of hope, I guess, that I know I'm doing the right thing. And it's just like I never because I've never really fully maybe believed in myself. I always did. And I always do, but it's and 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 even after awards, sometimes it's still hard, you know. Like right. it it's like getting a compliment unless you believe it yourself. You know, it's it kind of falls in deaf ears. So uh the awards are just I just I use them and and I think about them as like little props that uh further me towards where I'm meant to be going and hopefully there uh <laughs> if i look at these ones and i think ooh grammys <laughs> <laughs> so i i mean that's got to be like all right you know what let, let, let's 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 go all the way back to the beginning because um the the one thing that i i thought was interesting going back to when you were a little kid you were saying you know at a very very young age you wanted to be a rock star like yeah. who like who was it that was like you were seeing or hearing that said to yourself, I, I want to do that. A lot of people ask me, like, who inspired you? And it's so weird because no one person ever comes to mind. And I think that's because it was so inert in me and I knew it from within 
that I never had any external source to look towards. Of course, I had influences and mm-hmm. and different things like that. Um, and especially growing up in a culture in Ireland where music is so prevalent um, and it's it's very much uh, part of our like being, I guess, but it's not looked upon really as a, as a um, but no, I just something inside me just wanted that so bad. And I never had any one person who I thought, oh, that's what I want to be. Um, and, and I can only uh, attribute that to the fact that I have something within me that I can't explain. Uh, if, if, if that makes any sense to any listener. <laughs> that, you know, that's but that's like. I mean, that's kind of weird and unique because mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever heard one person say, like, there was really not one person. Like, like mm-hmm. yeah, you know, how many people kiss or Lemmy or Led Zeppelin? Somebody, like, just clicked with them and just put that in their mind. Like, but for you, it was just, like, nobody. Yeah, I think I – and maybe also because there was such a variety of influences that I had, there was never one that just stood out, like, to be the only one or the only thing. Um but I, I again, I look at my personal life and I've always gone this way when everyone else went that way. Mm. And I listen a lot to different, like, um, successful, like, business leaders or entrepreneurs, athletes, and they all kind of, like, I feel like there's something in me that resonates with something that they usually say or boxers, pro boxers. And mm. it's like... They've always just had such a vision and such a purpose that they just were so driven that they didn't get um, distracted by anything going right. on. And I don't know. I, I just I truly believe that people who are creative and who have gifts like there's a there's something within somebody that just they just have that like just raw gift and talent and you'll you'll pull from different inspirations perhaps. Okay. Um, but if you're truly your own artist or your own person, your own, you, you know, only, you know, yeah, I guess you're to drive in your, your car, <laughs> you know? Right. Now, now, did you, um, did you start playing guitar first? Did you think uh, you instantly wanted to start singing first? Um, no, actually it was piano, uh, that okay. I grew up on, um, I was singing from very, very young. Um, that that was that was kind of very uh, obvious that uh, I could kind of carry a note, um, and school kind of uh, figured that one out. Um, and then I just had the hunch for wanting to pick up the keyboard initially, uh, which turned into a nice uh, grand piano that's still at home in Ireland. Um, yes. Uh, so I started getting lessons. I really, really took to it. I loved it. Um, I started playing classical uh, piano. So I was, I was, um, yeah, I was playing Mozart and uh, Bach and a lot of the greats, like at a really, really young age, which I can. Uh, yeah, I know it's what I could. I'm like, blown away here. <laughs> uh, I wish I had of kind of almost kept that up, but it's all muscle memory. So, but it gave me a great foundation because I had music theory, um, and then I self taught myself the guitar actually. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I uh, took what I learned and I I didn't even get a lesson. I was like, okay, I'm going to figure this stuff out for myself. And it took me a while, but um, it was very easy for me to know chordal changes and different things like that. So I just had to learn um, where the kind of chord structures were on the guitar. And then I could just transfer the knowledge over. Um, and songwriting was something I was doing as a child. Uh, it was poetry first, I guess. And then, um, I, yeah, I got chosen for um, a kind of a songwriter retreat type thing in, in Ireland when I was 16. And I kind of was like, oh, maybe this this will lead to something. And I got really into it. And that's where I wanted to do my education into it. So, Do you, do you think what, that was probably the moment, too, that you really thought like, I got something here. 
Yeah, um, again, because as a songwriter, you don't really, you're not born knowing you're a songwriter, really. Uh, you right. Can, you can sing, you can play instruments, but the writing aspect of it, I think uh, somebody sometime uh, in my last week had said something very um, interesting that nearly everybody in the world is a songwriter. If you can tell a story, yeah. you're already a songwriter. It's just being able to put that into music and then, you know, structure it into a song, which is obviously the craft of it. Um, but yeah, it was when I was 16. Uh, that was when I was like, well, because I was winning like poetry competitions. When I you, You're like a born uh, award winner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, you know, it was, well, yes and no. There was times when I was like, you know, uh, maybe not robbed of something, but I think it was awesome because it really gave me the drive to, you know, even in school, they were like, well, we can't let you because, you know, I won't give the others a chance. I'm like, yeah, but I, I deserve it. Or, <laughs> you know, and I'd go crying or I wouldn't get picked for something. And I think that was just a great way of growing because I, I believe in life in general, if you're always winning, you don't know what it feels like to lose. And I think you mm. have to, it's like, you know, you don't enjoy the sunshine until you've had the rain and, 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 right. and so forth. So, um, yeah, but it, it did. It gave me a, a little confidence boost, I guess, when uh, Julia Turner was her name. She had a great, uh, she had a hit back home. Uh, I'll take the money and run. And it was her that was putting on this uh, week-long workshop and I was chosen. I was the youngest uh, contestant too. And it was just, yeah, it was nice. And they were like, you have something. So uh, I kind of rolled with that. So, so at what point then do you like start, do, do you like start out like kind of being like a solo artist and, and starting to play out for people or do you, like crossing over into the rock thing like it sounds like you kind of almost got thrown into that world oh i did um yeah i guess so when i started first um i wasn't even playing like i never really had like uh gigs or anything like that i would like sing in church for school okay. events and then um you know in the pubs at home you know i get asked to sing a song this, that, and, the other. and then uh it wasn't really until i moved to dublin which is the county above where i'm from county Louth, um where at 18 i believe i was um i went to study further education in music and at that point um then that's where uh you know you were able to collectively get with people uh, mm -hmm. formed uh, but I was actually a solo artist then too but um you know I would I, I got the taste of actually singing and playing with bands uh, okay you know uh, but then through the years I uh you know I had um a cousin of mine Ronan he he's uh he's a professional musician uh really the only one in the, in the family so there'd be times I'd go out and see him and I'd get up with the band but I had no prior experience at all and, wow. and then London, uh, so after Dublin, it was London, and, and that's where the band thing started. That's where, as a singer, you, you each had your, you know, those vocal tech, guitar tech, bass tech, and drum tech. And then, of course, they put you into bands and you formed your bands. And that's where really it, it was the start of it for me, really, at 20 years of age, which is kind of late. <laughs> yeah, right. I, so, once you started getting into the whole like kind of band world, um, it's like this memory sticks out to me. Like, I don't remember if I like, I remember like going through, I maybe it was when you left Thunder Mother, like doing like a search on YouTube of, of you and coming across like all these, um, like uh, just you acoustic performances of back in Ireland and stuff. And I was thinking to myself, wow, it's like she's got this whole world that, you know, the, the, the Thunder Mother fan probably has no idea. No idea. Or yeah. vice versa now. Now that people see me as a solo artist and they do some digging and they're like, what? <laughs> I'm like this and this. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, well, actually, it, I, oh, God, I guess um, because I was solo and then I went into a band in the UK called Smoking Aces, which... Um, okay myself and Jamie ran uh, so that was a whole 
um, corporate um, originals and covers. And that was down and up and down the whole of the UK. But also uh, me and the guitarist had the duo. So we had a two piece. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. And that was my full time job. So I, I was running, running that band full time. Um, and it wasn't until some of those videos went on YouTube that Thunder Mother got a hold of me. Um, and so I guess I went from band for years into the duo alongside that. And then when that's when that was subsiding, I decided, oh, I better go solo. And I did a bit of solo stuff, which was so scary because I had never really gone on stage with my own PA system and, and right. my own shows. So that was whew, that was the scariest thing I'd ever done, honestly. I think um, I always having the comfort of a backing mm. or the comfort of a great player beside me. It was just me, myself, and my crappy guitar playing. Um, <laughs> which was so um, but, but I, yeah, I think I that. Solo. But I, I think that part, um, whether it's you or anybody, that's where the true heart, soul, and talent of the musician comes out when it's just you. And that acoustic guitar or piano, and and can just lay it out there, and you can feel it. That's where the talent comes in. I agree because you can um, sugarcoat a lot of, um, I guess, if you know, regardless of somebody's voice or things, mm -hmm. but you can dress things up a lot more uh, mm -hmm. and use things a lot more. Um, to 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 make it more marketable or more listenable or but if you can just get one person one voice one guitar or piano or even a cappella mm -hmm. and you can put a room to silence bingo it's rest your case really you know because that is that's the true artistry there's nothing there's no frills there's yes yeah. no, that's and you can hear the the heart the soul and a pin drop hopefully <laughs> <laughs> I've been in those situations where I've been to a night and it's been ban 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 and then a solo artist gets up sings but it's something so raw mm -hmm. and it brings you to tears and it's just like it's so magical and not many people have that but when you do it's it's amazing so now it's you get to that point in your career where you end up getting contacted by Thunder Mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What were, were you like even thinking of going that route or like? Yeah, no, I was in my bedroom. I'm never going to forget the day as long as I live. I, I believe it was like April or May of 2013. Yeah, was it 2013? It was. And I had this random voicemail from Philippa, the lead guitarist saying, hi, my name is Philippa Nasil. I'm from Sweden. I just saw your video on YouTube. You're amazing. You've got the whiskey voice. Can uh, you contact me back? And I was like, what? <laughs> that was about all I got. And she had said in the thing that she had Facebooked me, but I went on my Facebook and I was like, I don't see a message. But sure, of course, that was back in the day when I didn't realize it went into the message request folder. Mm -hmm. so missed that completely and I tried calling her back but she left no number and I wouldn't make the call so I was like oh well I want to tell her no but you know who knows so she was very 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 adamant in getting me so she luckily called the next day so I was able to answer and she explained about the band needing a singer and that like management would be in contact with me and I was like wait just FYI like uh thank you very much but I had no idea who these girls were and I didn't do any research because I didn't even know the name of the band right so, um I was like look I run a, a band here in the UK it's really nice of you to offer that you would like me to be your singer um but you know I'm I'm booked out two years in advance here and you know which we were, it was crazy. And um, so I was like, but but thank you very, very much. And she said, well, and she was like, and this is 15 minutes later. And she said, oh, it's okay. It's just that we have some like really cool festivals coming up 
and like we're gonna open for Motorhead. And I was like, huh? Wait, <laughs> sorry. Um, let me check my calendar. <laughs> yeah, I, it was wild. Um, so I, I took down the name of the band, went home, and I was like, uh, here's the thing, boys. <laughs> I just got offered this really like insane um opportunity, but it's gonna clash with the some of the weddings that were booked for and they were like no you have to go like you're gonna have to do it so uh realized they were all female so like thunder mother at the time weren't massive but mm -hmm. like had done a few things and yeah and it looked pretty cool so i got my got my ass to work and i learned all the songs and yeah i flew out to sweden uh i think it was like three or four weeks later and Ended up opening up Metal Town and life that life as it were was never the same after that. <laughs> yeah. So, so what was that like going from being this uh, this Catholic Irish girl <laughs> doing uh, her own little music thing there to this next thing you know you're opening like you said for Motorhead and you're playing these festivals and. Yeah. It was it was definitely different. What I really liked about it was because at the time when I was at so I was in Wales in 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 Cardiff in Wales and 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 that band I was running Smoke and Aces was it was a lot of work. You know, it was my full time gig and and and, and I had never been to Sweden, so even the travel over there was like I had to drive myself to London, uh, fly from London over, and you know into a completely new culture and, 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 and country and to meet the four girls that I'd never met before. Right. Um, <laughs> so looking back, it wasn't very brave actually, but um, it was, it was awesome because everything was kind of pre-prepared. I guess mm -hmm. they, they were very, uh, you know, very forthcoming in their, you know, welcoming and, uh, you know, got picked up and, you know, it seemed to flow nice. I didn't have to do much thinking for myself. Um, right. Um, <laughs> that didn't always stay like that. But um, <laughs> yeah, good times. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just, it was incredible. Um, I just, I enjoyed every second of it because it was so new and it was exciting and everything was just going so fast. Mm -hmm. We ended up in Swedish news that night. Um People were talking. Um, and long story short, literally three months later, you know, Warner, uh, I remember Tomas, the, uh, one of the owners, saw us at a festival, gave me his card, and he said, I'll be in touch. And I was like, oh, girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was just, it's a whirlwind, really. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, like a lot of people saw that side of things, but you sure. know, there's a lot that goes into, into tour life and into that kind of living and, you know, and I wasn't living there at the time when I was over and back continuously. So it was, whew. And, and it seems too, especially, uh, like I've interviewed, uh, Philippa, I, I know I, said, I probably said that wrong, but I, I've interviewed her a couple of times and, you know, even keeping up with the band still to this day, like, and I've yeah. told them this, I want to party with them because they <laughs> are just, yeah. they, they are a rock and roll party. Like they, they just look like they have fun. So, I mean, going over there with them, I'm sure it was like a whole different lifestyle. Oh gosh. It was just, but everything in Sweden, like um, everybody, they're, they're very, I guess, as a culture, you know, uh, I, I grew up in like Partyville, you know, everybody's mm -hmm. drinking all the time and, and same in the UK kind of like, there's no real like, let's live for the weekend. Whereas in Sweden, right. they're really, like set in their ways and they're very like quiet during the week and then boom. So when they party, they party like hard. <laughs> I, I just, oh my God, some of the like, it's just weird and wacky and, and because it was the rock and roll world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were surrounded by a lot of, you know, uh, some up and coming bands and then some really well-established bands. Like, yeah. um, 
either or a side of the spectrum there was a lot of lots of alcohol of course there's lots of drugs around of course mm -hmm. but um just like the the vibe was always very 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 party vibe but i was very careful not to delve into a lot of because you know i was the instrument and we didn't get to sleep a lot if if right. we were touring or doing radio stuff uh doing you know uh promo uh, radio uh tours and stuff so there was a, a lack of sleep and a lot of um talking involved or early morning flights and drives and stuff like that so um but yeah no i just i really did i embraced it for everything that it was you know um i don't think i could do it today honestly i really, really? no like that, think, yeah no way <laughs> Now, now, when that was all like when that whole thing happened and, and the album came out, and you know, I, I remember like from being a fan here in the U.S., I was just like, you could see like the rise. You were like constantly seeing the rise and the great things happening. And I'm like, yeah, I can't wait for the new album. This new album's going to be amazing. And next thing I know, like, boom, here comes this press release that four out of the five girls have quit the band. I'm like. <laughs> Ooh, that don't sound good. That kind of that kind of answers the kind of question. Uh, there was obviously a problem here. <laughs> no, I know a lot of people are like what happened, and but you know what? I think it 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 had started maybe a whole year prior to even me leaving as well, or the girls. Like things had started to not become as fun. You know, my my personal heart wasn't in it anymore. It wasn't really my baby, I guess. And, um, you know, as 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 much as it was so great, there was a lot of, um, I guess, internal things that go on in bands that people don't have to know about or sure. you know guess what goes on. But you know, for the most part of it, it just started to get really kind of monotonous too you know and um there was just there was my health started going down the drain um due to probably not even being happy but also because we were just run to the ground like we were touring 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 and I was touring on top of them touring mm -hmm. and uh, you know there's a few other factors but I think for the most majority of it, I was like, you know, I'm not feeling this anymore. I really am. I'm, 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 I've, I'm trying. I really am trying. But, you know, it's just it's it's not really what I want to be doing anymore. And it wasn't an overnight decision. And, you know, when I think people might look at that and think, oh, that was a quick decision. But like, right. I had moved country. I had sold my house. I had given up my world to do it. So I was in it for the long haul, you know, or so I believed I was. Um, and so as time went on and I was like, oh, actually, this isn't really working out. <laughs> uh, but I had no expectations, which was beautiful. So I didn't have an expectation of getting into this band and it to be what it was. It was right. what I ever expected it to be anyway. And it gave me everything I needed and I loved so much of it and the girls my god like just what a family you were a family it wasn't just a band it was a family and so um yeah when you identify yourself with that then and that's like you know what do you do you're like oh my god like if this goes so it was definitely a process um mm -hmm. you know people just think i opted to move to america it was like no, but that took a long time. Um, you know, you can't just move to America either. You have to, uh, there's visa things involved and it's, uh, it was a, that was a long process in itself. So, but I had already, yeah, I had already kind of, I was removing myself. I started voicing my, um, that kind of thing to the girls and, you know, we were, four of us were in the same boat we were kind of you know we knew it on each other and we we would have our our little chats and stuff and so you know it was nice not to feel alone I guess right in that, in that sense but but I said listen if you feel free to do what you guys want to do but I, I gotta get out of here so uh you know I think uh 
when when in life in general if you if if you see something's going then you can be like oh maybe i can too you know so yeah it's like a courage thing right <laughs> well it seems too like uh like when i interviewed uh in interviewed her um the first time i remember i asked naturally i asked about you and she she said that and she felt and i can tell i really sensed that she was being very sincere about it too that you know you guys were still friends and still cool but you guys haven't talked and she she said I, i'm to blame she goes i haven't reached out to her and i really need to and i should i think i did reach out to her at one point um gosh i can't remember what it was or what it was over but i always said and i always live this way and um, i will always leave a situation in a good way uh, regardless of what's gone on uh, i always feel like that in life that i i don't like to have i don't have enemies i'm not i'm not that type of person if you've done me wrong well then you'll pay for it another way i'm sure and um, right. You know, so yeah, no, we 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 would still, you know, I still I still support them. I still talk about them. You know, I've I've reached out to Guernica more probably. We <laughs> <laughs> even met Guernica, but uh, we've had mutual friends actually. Uh, so the first time I reached out to her was um, a bass player that had played with me. I he had said something about playing with her in LA, and and then I was like, by the way, you're amazing, and she was like, oh my god, you're so sweet. And uh, we had, you know, chatted over and back. And then when she put out the post about her health and stuff, you know, of course, I reached out to her then too. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I, I've always said that Philippa is 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 a workhorse. She she yeah. she will she is a driven person, and um, you know, good good luck because I, I said that too when I left. I said, you know, she'll 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 do what she needs to do and. You know, uh, you can't you can't beat somebody up for that. So right. you know. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So so then, when you did leave, you were doing like you said, you were already doing some solo stuff and all. But yeah. were was like America on your sights at that point already, or were you just thinking I'm going to go back to Ireland and? Yeah, um, America. I think was all somewhere I kind of envisioned anyway. So Sweden was really never. <laughs> part of my plan um but when I was in the UK I was like oh this is life I buy my house got the band we're good this is this is gonna be life um but I was always so drawn to America the American market um so I always envisioned doing something or at least touring in America sure. and then um and and not Ireland Ireland I after I left it I you know I didn't really have the um, the want to, to to kind of move back there or anything like that and I hadn't had a music career in Ireland at all um, okay. my music career only really really truly started once I'd left and so um, yeah I, I guess when my Swedish days were coming to an end I was like maybe I should look into doing America like that you know and, and that's when the process started really Um but yeah, prior to that, because in Sweden I had the solo thing going on anyway, I was just doing shows when the girls weren't. Um, and so it was a not an easy transition, but I knew having been a solo artist and having the confidence at least that I could actually hold my own on a stage that maybe I could try it out and see see what I could do and where I could go from there. Had you like when you finally like did decide that you are going to come to America for good, did you come here like a few times to like visit or was it like a one-time thing and then that's it, I'm going or. Uh, I had vacated um, okay. in America a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, I think, you know, done the Disney world thing uh, when we grew up and um, but then I've been to Boston. Okay. For a few weeks. But my sister, Laura, she lives on Nantucket Island, which is in Massachusetts. Uh, okay. Thank God. So I had been a bunch to Nantucket, uh, which is not like real America at all. It's like it's like the Truman Show, I always say. Um, but I had been there plenty. And 
I've been over to LA, which actually LA was where I really wanted to go. Um, mm. Yeah, just for, I, I'm a beachy kind of person, very into my health and fitness too. And uh, LA seems like it's it's definitely, I know it's more my vibe. Um, but Nashville, no, I had back when I was, I gave myself my 30th birthday present was to go visit Austin and Nashville. Um, and I did, and I loved it. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I didn't have any previous experience or know anything or have anybody to go there, but right. I know I seem to have a tendency of doing that in life, just <laughs> then and hope for the best. <laughs> but, but it always worked out. So that's, I mean, ma making making the leap from, you know, from from Ireland over to Sweden is is a leap and it, it's a jump. And but when you're leaving there and coming to the United States, I mean, that's just a whole nother level. <laughs> Definitely is. But I'll tell you what, it was a whole lot easier moving to America than it was to Sweden. Really? Yeah. Because one, um, the language is the same. Okay. So English was the common denominator. However, Swedes are like insanely amazing at English. Um, but just everything here, I felt like I was understood a little bit more. Uh, and the oh. Irish culture is loved in America, whereas in Sweden, I was like, oh, you're so loud and you're so fiery. And, you know, I was I stuck out like a sore thumb in Sweden because it was just like, oh, you know, <laughs> it was not culturally. And they have a different taxes like you have different taxes here, too. But just everything, their health care, the way everything, the way they do everything. You know, I always find in, in Ireland or in England, even here a little bit, you can be like, mm, you'll do that for me, I'll do that for you, you know. Whereas mm -hmm. in Sweden, you're like, no. And you're like, oh, uh, okay. So Alrighty. very everything is like, they're very into following their government. Like like everything is Everything's just bad, yeah. by the rule. And that works great, you know. <laughs> That's why they have a nice, smooth, flowing country. But for somebody like myself who was a bit like into breaking the rules and you know this that and the other and just like just culturally it was just a huge shock um you know different food different just everything you know right. but, but it is it's like that with any I think from any major different cultural but I definitely there's a way uh closer correlation between say, Ireland, Britain, and America than there would be from Sweden to either or. I, I find, wow. personally, maybe other people have uh, different opinions on that. But. It, it's like, like I'm, I'm originally from Philadelphia, and I, I moved here two and a half years ago. <laughs> and uh, I, I said all my life, I would never leave Philadelphia. <laughs> and then when I came here and, and, the, and my whole situation that brought me here, um, I still like, I'm like, I, I don't believe I'm in freaking Nashville. Like I, I'm shocked by that, yeah. but I love it here and I feel at home here. I mean, it, it's a truly a tremendous city. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's the site when they, when they say Southern hospitality, they, they definitely have uh, that. Um, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and it's part of why I think it, that it was my decision LA or Nashville there's a lot of different factors but um for sure uh even when I tell people they're like oh god yeah no Nashville of course and mm -hmm. um, now people of course associate that with oh you're a country artist I'm like eh, no <laughs> I'm not. um but there's well it's very cosmopolitan here too but I mean it's just there's just there is everything here but an ocean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And I'm glad you love it too. I, I think a lot of people who come here end up staying here, and mm -hmm. that's definitely one of the reasons why. Because I mean, it's just so likable. There's so, and there's such a camaraderie here. Yeah, that's hard to really find anywhere else, actually. I, I mean, honestly, I, I don't think I could ever picture myself living back in the Philadelphia area or probably anywhere else. I know, right? It's, it's crazy. Yeah. 
And you know, fair play, because I know a lot of people say, oh, well, it's from state to state, but like moving state to state is like moving a different country yeah. in, in Europe. So mm -hmm. um, because every state has something so different to offer and different mm -hmm. mentalities, different politics, different yeah. weather, different, like everything. There's, a, there's such a huge, vast um difference within states so yeah even people who move states like it's you know you might not have to physically leave your country but you may as well be sometimes <laughs> so w when you get here for good what's the first thing you do like okay i'd say i'm i'm claire cunningham and i am in nashville where do i go now from here do i just grab my guitar and walk into some place <laughs> and well, actually, so I first, when I first moved, uh, I I was living in Nantucket for a couple okay. of months um, because I was writing songs for my sister's film production company. And okay. so uh, with that, I was allowed uh, free reign to kind of travel and get inspiration for writing. So that's where the whole Nashville thing came into play. Um, and so, yeah, I actually ended up... Um, just doing a very quick audition one Saturday, uh, I believe it was Tootsie's, and the band that were there, the lady to me, she said, the drummer, she said, what are you doing later? And this wasn't even when I'd moved there. I was just visiting. It was March 2017. And okay. um, I was like, nothing, because I'm here to just check it out. And she says... I want you to come in. She told me the bar to go into on this particular Saturday night. I want you to get up and do those two songs. And I was like, sure. And so I rock up and it's a Saturday night. The place is packed. And I get up and like, they were just like, what? <laughs> and um, yeah, I have a dear friend of mine now. who was the general manager of a hotel who ended up having to put me up because my, oh God, it was an Airbnb disaster. Um, but he saw me that night and he said, okay, I've been here a little while and this doesn't happen. What, how, how did you like, you don't <laughs> walk up on stage. So I told him the story, ended up playing Bluebird Cafe um, okay. a week later for an open mic thing by Faith as well. I uh, had just written a song and so I, I started in the three weeks that I decided to visit. Uh, I built up a bit of a, a connection with some, some bands and some things. And I was told that if I was to come back, that I'd be put to work. So um, and I worked really hard and I am a very hard worker. So uh, I continue doing that to this day. You know, it's all about networking and, and building up. And I truly believe I don't, I'm not a fan of just like, using i i don't talk about my past ever mm. so people ask then i'll tell them what if you want to find it out it's there uh but i truly believe that if you really want to hear what this is about then you can get the real true authentic story through my music and then you know so you don't have like uh when you're because you literally are playing somewhere like seven nights a week um well, at least used to. It probably looks like I still do. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've limited that a little bit. <laughs> I was so you, more than I do sing now, but, yeah, for sure. Ha have you had anybody come in and, and realize, like, who you are and start screaming Thunder Mother or anything? I've had a few people come in and Thunder Mother shirts, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, there was some guys from Ohio who had a shirt on. Um, I've had... Some there's a few fans that had followed us back in the day, and uh, that now because I'm an American, and if they're coming through Nashville, they'll come in. And yeah, there was one gentleman, he was it was that he, he his friend came over, he was he, he can't even breathe, like he, he you're making his mouth. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> so random, but yeah, there has been, yeah, there has been a few, um, and that's been kind of cool because they followed like years ago and now they get to come to Nashville and say hi to this <laughs> now what you're doing now and it's you know or like you said people say Nashville they think country but you're like 
kind of like all over the spectrum with your music. You're doing a little bit of country, a little bit of this, a little bit of pop. Like you're doing a little bit of everything. Um, do you miss plugging in and hearing that distortion? <laughs> I won't lie, there are ne very few occasions where I'll get asked to front um, some of the, the bands downtown. Uh -huh. and, uh, and if I'm free and I feel like, you know, I want to, then I do. And I, oh, yeah, it's, sometimes it is awesome. You know, I feel like electrified again when I'm moving and the energy's going and um yeah there there definitely is something to be said about that and um, it's like a nostalgic feeling more than anything you know but for me nothing beats just standing in a room closing my eyes and just pouring my heart out you know because uh my celtic stuff is really what i've been concentrating on now and um you know it's it's something it's it's a bit of me people are getting the the true authentic um you know the the realness the rawness out of me now but gosh yeah i do love a good band too but like, <laughs> man is like i will be getting you know a lineup behind me to go and do different things especially if i do another chicago tour and i think there's going to be different uh scenarios where i'm gonna definitely have some back and might not be as rock and roll as as my old days but uh yeah <laughs> but to answer your question i do it, it's you know there is nothing like a good old rock and roll <laughs> for me, for me isn't. So, so let's uh let's talk into this new uh whole celtic thing that you're doing um i you know on one hand i want to say it's like it's different but it's uh it's it is but it isn't it's like it's got this the spin that you've kind of made uh, into your own sound, we'll say. Yeah, you know, even a lot of people say I do that even when it comes to covers. And I don't know how to otherwise do so. So whatever people hear, I guess, it's just what comes out. And um, I think a few people back home have been um, comparing me to Dolores Keene is her name, uh, if anyone okay. wants to look her up. Um but I mean, yeah, I because again with inspiration, I guess I'm so in, you know, I just get a lot. I listen to a lot and have heard a lot over the years that there's not really one artist again that I have just listened to and then that's where I go. So whatever comes out really is, I guess, is just it's coming from within and it's so hard to, that's why I even trying to genreize what I do sometimes, apart from the Celtic stuff, that's easy because mm -hmm. it's like world music or Celtic. It's kind of hard because I'm like fusing things that have never been done before, especially like when I did a Celtic EDM track, Electronic Dance. People are like, what? This is so cool. And I'm like, I don't know, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, <laughs> you have today though. You don't have to be anything. You can just be yourself. And right. If, if you are yourself and maybe it's a new thing like when somebody comes up with something new and hasn't been done before well somebody has to be the start of a trend right so i think that's important for artists to stick by themselves do you um for, for, from what i've gotten to know about you over the last few weeks of messaging back and forth pe people don't even realize just to show you how like I was saying, with the, she does all these sh constant shows and everything else. Like she is busy, like nonstop <laughs> busy. Like it took it took us three weeks to get this together. Um, yeah. <laughs> but do you think you um, dive in deeper personally as a solo artist than you did, you know, in a band project? Yeah, 100%. Because, like, as a solo artist, it's me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. And I guess the songs that I'm writing and performing are all me. If Like, some of them are co-written, of course, but with that intent of my story or a story or something that I'm very passionate about, which is, like, mental health awareness, addiction awareness, suicide prevention, that kind of thing. 
Whereas in band scenarios, you still can. Mm -hmm. It's just a little harder to be a little more emotional, maybe. Um, and it's why, again, with even Thunder Mother, like, I wasn't getting on stage, getting in all my feels. I was just like, right. like, rolling, and it was fun. But I wasn't getting up there, and I wasn't, like, singing. Like, it wasn't. From the heart. Yeah, that, but that's not what that style of music really does anyway. It's more yeah. for the, um, you know, the, the, the fun side of it. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, it doesn't matter what style of music you do. I think you can always, put, you know, portray some emotion, of course. Um, but for sure, I think doing my solo stuff and just having my, myself to, I guess, answer to you as well. I'm probably not the easiest person to play along with because I'm all over the place. <laughs> I always walk into a studio and I'm like, just so you know, I have really weird sense of time and I'm very just, you know, uh, I don't know. It's it's so hard to explain sometimes that I don't even think there is an explanation for what this is sometimes. <laughs> We're still working it out. <laughs> we're all we're always working it out. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another major thing is people see this and then they hear this, and then they're like, "This doesn't make sense." I'm like, "That's why." But part of me actually almost enjoys that because it shows it'll teach people. As one of the four agreements in life is never to make assumptions. We're all subject to doing it, but. If you just take a book and pretend I'm a book and open it up and read a couple of pages, you'll soon see that there's a lot more in depth than of what you see on the outside. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I love now, that factor. <laughs> but how about as well? Because um, I know you're a very spiritual person. Do you put that into your music as well? Now I do. Well, that's where my music's coming from. So this year is going to be a very fun year and I'm so excited because I've got some stuff that's cooking and that I'm going to be putting out that came from no other source but the man above. I promise you because there is those times and they've happened few and far between in my life that I just have this I don't I don't write when I, I'm not one of these who writes every day. I used to, uh, but when I write, it's so fast and it literally, like I can't even keep up with the pen on the paper. Um, and I always know it comes from somewhere because I get really emotional. And it's like, they're the type of songs that I write in like eight to 15 minutes. Wow. And, and, and they're not songs that even usually revisit. Once they're written, boom, that's it. There's not much that has to be done with them. In and, and I don't mean that in any egotistical way at all. I just mean that I don't even bother trying to change what goes on the paper because I know it's not me that that's coming from. And it's usually songs that have a message to go yeah. with it that I know I need to administer. So... It's so amazing, and it's something again. It's probably hard to explain, um, other than that I know that, um, I'm driven by a higher source, and it's a beautiful thing. And I just have to learn to lean into it a lot more and listen. and And I've learned over the years because I'm so self critical. Oh my gosh, like so self critical that I have to get out my own way and realize that sometimes what's on that paper is just exactly what needs to be on the paper. I don't need to fancy it up. I don't need to do anything with it. I just need to let it be. You know? Do you think that's happening more with you? Wow. Yeah. yeah. All the songs I write now, I hardly ever write, but when I do, it's like, boom. So, and I've, I'm allowing that to happen. I don't, I don't stress. I don't write. I guess I'm always writing. Like I'm always like my cogs are always turning. I've always got ideas. I'll always be like jotting things down. But when I write, like I really rarely get into writing rooms anymore. I was in writing rooms seven days a week. Like Nashville wow. is built on. Mm -hmm. 
and it's it's like what you do and it was brilliant when i came i really did learn the art and craft of songwriting here more than anywhere and um, but lately i just the songs i'm writing unless people in a room are going to feel that with me it's really hard like that's yeah that's not gonna, you know it's not going to fly <laughs> Do, do you uh was there a time do you think that that was happening and you kind of fought it yeah yeah because i i get an idea i'd say something i'd be like oh my god that sounds really crap so i'm not even gonna say it <laughs> or i just wasn't in it like it wasn't for me like i'd, I'd right. get in a room and i used to say to people like, like i get it like a lot of people want to write and they want to write hits and they want to mm. write the next thing that's going to go on country music radio or whatever. And that's awesome. And they're amazing at that. But that's not me. And I have to write from the heart. And I have to write what I know is going to make a difference in somebody else's life. Or I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be raw. And some people don't really want to go down that road. So, or people, there's a formula to write in here uh, that isn't, prevalent in the style that I write in so I used to get my songs evaluated and then I stopped doing that because even like Angel of the Emerald Isle which you know that ended up taking home I remember like Best Folk Americana Song of the Year at the Josie's and I was just like wow if I had to listen to the evaluator who evaluated that song they were like, well, I shouldn't do this and I shouldn't do that. It's amazing. But like, if you just do this, this, this. And, th and I was like, so basically change the song to fit the country format. That's not good. So I just kind of had to do this. <laughs> um, where I knew I had to, because if I was to do what they were saying, which was right. really in any way, um, they didn't get that style. So... Mm -hmm you know so um i had to be very careful then about like who hears this kind of stuff and who understands it it's very important that you you know there's no real rules ever to songwriting but here they're so boxed in like oh this has to rhyme with this and this has to do this and it's like it is it's a craft and um, and and it works but it works only for a certain style so that's all right. mm, this is Who, I, I, I didn't even know about this whole evaluator thing. Who has that job? So there's different companies. Like, well, you can pay to do them, but I, I was part of like um, an organization here. And like, okay. as part of your membership, uh, you would get evaluations. Like, they're paid to evaluate. Sure. So just going to go, because you're like, well, that was useless to me. They have to say something. So if, if usually, and sometimes it's awesome. Like you get really like a good like uh, feedback. Like maybe if you just change this way or like maybe as, as an outsider, like this doesn't make sense. So, you know, and there'll be times I was like, yeah, that was awesome. I'm going to do that and make the song better. But I just, by the, by the time I was doing my Celtic stuff, I was like, oh, there's no point in even getting this valuated actually, because it's just like, it's, they're not, they're not going to get it. Yeah. They're not going to get it, which is again, totally uh, understandable, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, th and that's when I say like now when I'm writing, I'm just like, wow. Okay. And it's starting to show like uh, the songs that have been doing the best are like those that are coming from <laughs> above. So I I have to listen. I have to I have to start realizing that, you know, it's just it's not me anymore. This is it's right. you know, I'm just a vessel, you know. So So well bring us up to you. I mean, you just released uh, a video for your, your song Angel of the Emerald yeah. Isle. Um, um amazing song, amazing video. Um, but you also did uh, uh, was it a GoFundMe for that? To, oh, well, no, that's for uh, Clovers, which is okay. in the spring. Um, oh, my God, I'm so excited about that one. Oh, there's so many exciting things going, but no, <laughs> that's going um, to be uh, hopefully. So I think one of the guys is in hospital at the minute, and that's why we've had a bit of a delay. But okay. that will be uh, what that uh, GoFundMe was for. So it's the song Clovers that I released on my third year anniversary living here in Nashville, which was May 21st. So 
it came out as a single and yeah myself and Drac uh, well we were we were always talking about doing a music video but um yeah there's there's gonna be some good cats coming flying in for it and so one of them unfortunately is not doing too well at the minute so that's why. okay yeah but that will be on the curve <laughs> okay so tell us about angel of the emerald isle like <laughs> where was that filmed at because that's obviously not in nashville oh it is actually it's well it's down here in franklin um so oh my gosh the night that we did it uh it was only three weeks ago four weeks ago not even um it was the coldest night that we'd had. It was 21 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like minus seven, eight more in Europe. Um, and we started at 2 a.m. And we shot till about 8 a.m., I believe. Wow. And then, yeah. So Dylan and Emma, they're, uh, they just recently got married and uh, they have a beautiful farmhouse 20 minutes south of me down here in Franklin. Okay. And uh, it was most of the forest shots and stuff were done at their place. Um, and then we went out just two mile from their house. Their neighbors have their own private lake. That lake. That oh, lake. okay. Yeah. Uh, and Wood Newton, who um, is the co writer and uh, one of the so I have two music videos that were recently released and Watercolor World was another one. So Dylan was also the producer on that one. Uh, but Wood Newton is um, is one of the writers on that and he lent us the uh, the canoe for the occasion. So uh, yeah. And so we they they had uh, driven it down and uh, the lake just happened to be uh, uh, it was like something out of Narnia, like I was so cold. I did cry. Like it was so cold. Like I couldn't feel any of my limbs. And you, the fog coming out of my mouth, like, is for real. It's real, yeah. Yeah, I looked really. I, I said to the guys, I look like I'm crying, like legit crying. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't even need a smoke machine or anything. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it was done right here, and it was done in like it was one. It was one day of filming, but um, with the lantern that I had. I didn't work on that night so we just I just had to go back uh, a week or two later and just get that shot done um but yeah it was all done here and it was very fast even the pre-production like I I kind of said you know what I feel like doing a music video for this I'm going out for Christmas so um that's that's as fast as that one went I'm very pleased with it so I'm glad people people have been liking it so was that kind of like a little uh, to bring it back to Ireland in a way? Yeah, you know, it's I guess because even at the time, I think that was one of the first almost one, of the, well it was one of the first co-writes I did here too uh, with Patrick McManus and um, it does, it gives me that feeling of like just you know, of, of home life and um you know just the i guess the um well the whole but you know it was funny because when i did that song like and when it when it won an award i was like oh people like this like <laughs> i wasn't really about it like honestly i even said it to patrick when he said oh the talking bit you have to talk i was like oh my god no this is so cringy like uh, nope <laughs> and i hated doing it and i wouldn't even perform it but now there's something different i don't know it's just i feel you know a bigger connection to to home than i probably did when i even lived there you know wow yeah it's, when's it's the last time you've been there gosh uh 2018 i believe oh wow yeah um with the way the pandemic turned out, I guess, you know, and, and when I moved out of home first, I would go home every like weekend when I lived in Dublin. Then it okay. became maybe once a month when I lived in um, England. And then when I was in Sweden, it was when I wasn't touring. So it was like, mm -hmm. you know, every now and again, and it just would dwindle down into maybe once a year. And then of course, hello pandemic. So. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, right. <laughs> Here we are, two years on. <laughs> two weeks. 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, that's put a bit of a stop to it. But you know, um, I'm so blessed and we all are, I believe, having modern technology. So, you know, I just saw my folks for the first time in like two years and it felt like it was yesterday. So Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, they came over here to America. Um so yeah, it, it's it's crazy how just time leaves you but it feels like no time passes when 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 we have modern technology so we're very very blessed this is true yeah. now uh i heard a rumor that you might end up possibly playing a song for us mm -hmm. i just might <laughs> yeah because we've been speaking yeah i'm so sorry you know i i had a bout of laryngitis today actually feels like the first day i'm talking now i'm fatiguing more than i would um Nobody will notice that, but it's, yeah, it's been a wild stint of laryngitis. So I couldn't even, I legit couldn't even speak, let alone sing. And um, so, but talking will wreck your voice quicker than it will to sing. So I was like, really? Yeah, because you're using, you really are using a lot of your voice box when you're talking. Okay. And you're, you're using, it's, it's like, it's a lazy way. Uh, you use a lot more air, whereas when you're singing, uh, you're actually using a lot of the diaphragm, which is down here, and okay. pushing it through a, a, a different way, uh, especially how I talk as well, because I was told by speech therapists that I talk very lazy because I'm like, right in here. <laughs> Whereas if I just spoke up here, I was like, no, oh, I sound like a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 seriously, you need to like, so... Uh, but no singing, I can definitely, you know, you feel it. It's it's resonating down right in your stomach. So, um, hmm. there's, yeah, that's why when I've been off for the last week, yeah, I had to take it off singing, but I got back into singing quicker than I did talking. Wow. Yeah. So there's that's a so fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. Well, what would you like? Because, like, I mean, I could do. Obviously, I have my Aaron McCree, which is like my finisher, my Irish one. Or I, yeah. I could do Angel of the Emerald Isle, or you could. Oh well, could, then then do that one. Yeah, I mean Angel. that's the one with the that's with the new video. You got to do that one. Yeah, I know. Well, I figured that. I was like, maybe, maybe people, if they haven't heard me before, will want to hear this one instead. Um. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, do it. I yeah. Uh, typically, when I play as well, I have a lovely harmony pedal, and I have. Got that right now, so you'll have to forgive me. But um, yeah, and this music video is because the song. A lot of people are like, "I love your new song," and I was like, "Not actually a new song at all. It's like two years old." Um, but the music video is is only new, so it's like make the most of a song. And every year it comes up because it's kind of Christmassy sounding, you know. Right. Because it's, it's all about an angel who comes down, the angel of the Emerald Isle, who comes down and gives gifts to the poor and, um, you know, who comes down on Christmas Eve and, and, and hands out and dishes out gifts. And it's just a light for those that are going maybe through some dark times. So, all righty. Let's see how this goes. All right. The streets of Ireland Hold many a tale And I'm going to tell you just the one So close your eyes Listen within And you just might believe when I'm done Fog were rolling on the of December twenty four, and an angel wings white as snow would appear. Leaving gifts for the poor, and they call her. Yes, they call her Angel of the Emerald Isle. Oh, they call her. Yes, they call. 
each doorstep. The heavenly things, sweet treasures to have and to hold beneath the glowing they hope and joy with pots full of silver and gold and they called her oh they called her angel of the emerald It was a night. The fog rolled in, so it'll be dark. I felt her wing brush softly across my Irish heart. And they called her. Yes, they called her. That was beautiful. Oh my God, that was amazing. You're so sweet. Um, wow. The good old angel of the Emerald Isle. <laughs> I, 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 I'm listening to that song and I'm saying to myself, not only is it a beautiful song, but I was like, I'm picturing your parents being so proud of you with that song. Oh, <laughs> you know, they've always been very proud. I'm very, very blessed. I come from a family who really truly supported my um, decision to go off and and uh, do music as a career because that is not a very uh, sustainable um, kind of career path you know sure. um, so I truly I I yeah I truly believe that anybody who is successful in this world can go off and do it themselves but if you do have the support of um of your family, uh, sometimes peers, but peers can go one or two ways. You can try mm -hmm. and yourself or, um, but yeah, if you don't have the, uh, the true backing of your family, uh, I can't, I can't imagine what that must feel like. It's been horrible. So, uh, yeah, my parents are very, very, very proud. And, um, you know, and, and also, so it, what people don't know about even that song, the, the front cover, um, of the single of that, which was back in 2019, uh, was a, a picture. Actually, my sister and her husband took. Uh, it's right above where we live, back home. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. So I'm a big fan of um, using local photographers or and or um, different like uh, entrepreneurs, whatever, starting up uh, things that I truly believe in. Or, uh, you know, covers, um, yeah, just using different photographers that I work with or, you know, trying to use different, uh, like, I love, that's why I love Bombers and Sleeves too. Like, you know, it's just like working with uh, people who, you know, are trying to strive to make this world a better place and just giving those that I know might need an extra hand out. Like, I, I truly believe, because big corporations are always going to make their money and I just, I right. love to see, you know. Um, supporting local actually is what I love to do. So. As a matter of fact, how how did you end up getting hooked up with Bombers and Sleeves? It's like it's funny. Like when I first uh, started yeah. becoming part of the family, 
uh, with Steve and all that. One night we were hanging out, and I, I said to him, "I'm like, do you realize Claire is part of Thunder Mother?" And he, he like he didn't he didn't really know that whole world of you. And I'm like, dude, like you don't, you don't know. That's what I mean. I don't tell people a lot of what I do, so it's like so intriguing when people find out. They're like, where? And um, so me and Steve got acquainted from. Uh, a random, I, think, I believe it was a Tuesday down, uh, I think it was the Underground it was called, on Broadway in, in okay. Nashville. So I, every now and again, get to do the songwriting uh, team build events. So um, there's a gentleman, Papa Rains is his name, he, um, he will get a big corporation that come into town and we want to team build and do a fun, um, you know, different corporations want them to, do different tasks do different things and they'll do tours they'll do this that and the other they'll be there for work but one of the things that gets offered to them as a package is uh write a song with a songwriter in nashville and so uh there's a couple of us that get asked every now and again uh can we come in and and and, and help with this type of thing and so it was my first one of those and uh so i rock up I had no expectations as I always do. And uh, <laughs> it happened to be one of the other writers. And so he heard me and saw my style and stuff like that. So uh, we we really did be acquainted that day. And he, he was talking about, because he they had only just kind of kicked off mm -hmm. the sleeves at that point. And uh, he was like, I said, yeah, I'll model for you if you ever want. Like, I, you're the stuff looks amazing and I'd love to support local and he's an amazing songwriter and artist mm -hmm. himself. And, and that's where it kind of kicked off, kind of got first photo shoot going with them. And then, you know, and I wear their stuff all the time. I always tell Steve, like I'm literally in your stuff, like <laughs> all the time. to the point where I'm thinking people probably think I don't own any other clothes. <laughs> Well, I did. I had it one time where somebody was in Vegas, saw them in Vegas, bought the T-shirt in Vegas, came to Nashville, and me and him were wearing the same T-shirt. And I was oh, like, cool. walks into the hotel that I was playing. I was like, oh, that's weird. It's a bombers and sleeves top. You know, so I called him out, and he was like, no way. We just saw them in Vegas. And I was like, yeah. That's, like, that's awesome. The world out there. But um, yeah, so that's how myself and Steve got acquainted. Yeah, and I know, yeah, because you're you're really good friends with them. So like, it's such a small world. I'm like, it is it blows my mind all the time. I don't know why. I don't know why I get surprised every single time. <laughs> I'm like, of course it is. It is, and and even just how we're talking. Like I said, I why was I searching? I was searching for podcast. I was searching for something or an interview that I had done, and I just as odd as this sounds, I googled myself to see if it would come up. Right. And in doing so, on page two of Google was um, I, I saw my name with Guernica and and your name in 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 a podcast, and it was like thirty minutes long. And I said, "Oh, I haven't seen this before. I'll take a listen." So I'm like listening to it, and and then Guernica is talking about uh, yeah uh, about you know prior to her coming in and then when she came mm -hmm. in and then you had said you saw me I was like who is this guy I need, to <laughs> I need so I messaged her straight away and I was like hey you know that interview you did like what details do you have like I, I need to get in touch <laughs> so funny. funny I know that is so funny oh amazing I love the world <laughs> it, yeah it's it's like we said at the very beginning of all this like it's you know, it's like we were circling around, and then here we are. Yep, it's like sharks in a in an ocean. They're just circling around a human, and they go, "Actually, now we'll have it." <laughs> you know, but I truly believe in uh, timing is everything with mm -hmm. everything for the good and the bad. You know, um. So I always truly, truly will tell people that what's for you will will seriously never pass you. It might pass you for a little, yeah. bit, but. There's no coincidences. There's no, you know, uh, but everybody has their own ideas in these things. But I, 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 that's why I don't think there's no point in sweating the small stuff, really, you know, because not at all. It's gonna, you know, and we we've seen way too much now during this whole period of time, and then of course, you know, different natural disasters come along as well, as you know, and 
So, you know, it's just, you gotta, you gotta pull at the punches and just know that if it's something's resisting, it's resisting for a reason. And if it's not, and you get a good, good feeling about it, then go for it. Why there not? What there if you, you got go. some ease, you know? <laughs> So, uh, so now that we're in uh, 2022, what are the plans now for the rest of the year for you? So I'm back into the studio tomorrow. Um, I have a song um, that is currently, I should be just putting the back and vocals down to it tomorrow. Um, it's exciting. I'm going to talk all about that one. I'm going to be releasing it. Um, I'm also going to be talking to them about uh, the two next songs that I want to do. Uh, the Silver Door CA Studios with Eddie and Justy. And that is going to be a compilation. I think I'll just do a three-track uh, EP. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely release each single separately, but it's it's going to be my what I'm going to call my mental health awareness. It's 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 everything to do with um, with uh, self love and um, living life like with the light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing and another one to to want to please um the lord and uh give thanks to that so it's going to be a very i'm so i'm so excited like i just and it came to me when i was driving back from new year's i think i was like yeah all right i'm gonna do that and i'm also got a lot of exciting things coming up in the video for clovers as well but uh nice. that's going to be revealed closer to the time but um yeah so my plan is to do that uh possibly uh, i've got some other like celtic things probably that i'll i'll, I'll um keep an eye on uh, lots of festivals coming up um i oh, am cool. you are looking at the booking agent herself so if anybody else <laughs> talk to me, talk to me <laughs> i will answer you um no but i have a list of about 250 uh celtic fests so some of them I've already managed to get. Uh, so I'll, I'll throughout the year, of course, I'll be keeping everybody up to speed. Um, I know I'm going back to Chicago for March. Um, so uh, Dave over there in uh, Chicago is amazing. And uh, I'm going to hopefully maybe get a little band thing going there when I get there. There'll be a St. Patrick's Day celebration thing going on for sure. Um mm -hmm. And just yeah, I'm just I'm I'm open. I'm very open to whatever comes of two, 2022. Um, I do believe I have a cruise that I'm going to be on. Um, that was meant to happen two years ago. Uh, there's a artist here called Big Smo. Uh, I don't know yes. if you know he's a big country artist. Um, so he's headlining it. Uh, I'm on that uh, bill. So we're doing a Mexican cruise, I believe. But you know. As with everything in this pandemic, uh, who knows? day by day, who knows? Day by day. So I've just realized yeah. that you know you just have to roll with the punches on on this kind of thing, especially from state to state and from mm -hmm. you know different things. So, but uh, I'd love to see, uh, and I'll put this out there in 2022 that I get a team uh, that Claire Cunningham finally gets her own team of people behind her uh whether that be management uh publishing uh, record label whatever that's going to be it's going to happen when it happens and it's going to be truly like uh you know it's gonna be a beautiful thing i, I feel it i'm praying for that for sure and mm -hmm. um, because I, I need it now you know it's it's, it's coming to the point where like there's only a lot of work it is it's it is a lot of work i thoroughly enjoy it but uh you know people d don't realize the mm -hmm. a lot of what goes into to make it you know you're when you're doing your own marketing and your branding and you're answering to your emails your messages your socials uh keeping up with the website booking you know it's it's a lot of work so yeah but you know, I I don't look at it like work because it's me, it's it's my heart. So, you know. But again, recording studio time as well. You know, uh, preparing for different things. So there is, there's a lot that goes into it. But it's beautiful, and I think if you truly love what you do and you know you're doing it for the better of everybody around you, then you know, uh, then you can't really be steered too wrong. So. Oh, I'm performing on top of that too. So, you know, 
and then there's life, <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, there I, is life. <laughs> yeah, people are. What do you do in your spare time? I'm like, sorry, my what? Yeah, right. What is that? But everybody has 24 hours, so I truly believe if you uh, prioritize, and you know, for for me, prioritizing is like, and my health and my fitness uh, is a big part of 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 that too. So, you know, um, there's nothing really comes before. Um, my uh, my own well-being because if I'm not well which I'm have a tendency of overdoing things all the time um, including exercise and you know food and all the things that people associate with health but you can overdo those two things as well so um, finding that balance but uh, I truly believe yeah if you are what you see you know I am the instrument I am the, the person mm -hmm. so this needs to be mentally good emotionally good physically good you know um and that's where i personally truly believe my faith has uh, has played a huge huge part in, in my overturn of of, of events so uh, bless yeah you have to be uh i feel on page with that to lead into everything else yeah even if you're not religious or you don't whatever you choose is your pathway that is you know i i just i truly believe you gotta like i always say if you go within you'll never go it out and then um, all the answers are right here you know we look for every distraction under the sun but it's very hard to sit with yourself sometimes and really ask them questions or if you're getting the answers they might not be the answers you want it might not be the plan that you want Mm -hmm. not in control we i think we know that deep down but it's truly surrendering to that and that's where the magic happens when you step out of your own way <laughs> and trust me, it's a process that i'm <laughs> learning <laughs> you know so but it's beautiful and i i i truly wish that for everybody i wish everybody could find the peace be found and trust me when you find it it's not like it's there all the time it is there all the time actually but it's learning to live knowing mm. it's there and trusting it and of course we're all so we're human our human ego our human self gets in the way a lot of the time um but i do believe that if we just i think the biggest part of that is trusting it it is. It's everything to do with trust. You know, I changed. I had a little thing on, on my Instagram, but here's one for people. We walk by faith, not by sight. And that's, I think, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Right. And uh, that's the last I'll, 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 I'll say on that front. But honestly, walk by faith, not by sight. And if you can do that and you can fully trust and you can fully surrender. It is. I've watched it happen in my own life. The magic happens as soon as you let go. But we're all subject to wanting that net behind us if you fall. Yeah. You know. Exactly. So, and that's okay. We're we're all, you know, it's it's a learning curve and it, it doesn't mean we've got it all figured out. I for sure do not have it figured out. And I don't think we ever will. And I know always okay. I think if you're doing your best, again, four agreements in life, the fourth one being always do your best. Just do your best. And, um, you know, if it's meant to be, it's going to be. So Absolutely. I see these things and I know I <laughs> I get them. And they're like, this is for you too, Claire. So listen. <laughs> you know? That's the thing. I mean, you're saying it. Uh, yeah, you're saying it. You're projecting it out. But that message is also for yourself. Not just everybody else. Yeah. And a lot of the songs, again, my biggest one that will come out this year is called I Swear. And as much as I thought that it was com it was coming through me to minister out, but sometimes I'm like, wow, that was just, that was solely for me in that moment in time with me thinking that it was for something else. But it was truly for me at the time, but now it gets to serve for others. And that's the beauty of songwriting, I think, because spoken word, be impeccable with your here, here the four agreements, lads, be impeccable with your word. 
don't take things too personally. Um, never make assumptions and always do your best. Uh, and so, yeah, always be impeccable with this because what you say uh, can have a ripple effect. So it's important that we listen and read and 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 and, and involve ourselves in things that are going to make us grow um, and not be too fear-based and not be driven by those. But it's hard, you know. Mm-hmm. Distractions mm-hmm. are always going to be there, and 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 it's like the dangling fruit, you know. Oh, you can have this as the temptation of of wanting to go where everybody else is, but and that's where sometimes it's unexplainable when people are like, "Well, why don't you just?" I'm like, "I don't know. I can't explain." It. <laughs> but, don't even try to explain it. It's no point. I I, hmm. I truly believe again that we're not all made the same, and we don't oh. all have the same way of thinking, and. I'm not right and you're not right. And none of us, like we all have our way of doing things and, and uh, we all can learn from each other. And I'm always so open to learning new things and and being open-minded. I think not being so close to one set of ideals or yes, I think it's important to have integrity and to stand by your, you know, um, Mm -hmm. your, you know, laws or what, what not, but, I, I do believe so studies like show that when the I think this is what's happening in the world right now, people stick to a narrative. They've formed that part of the brain in the mm-hmm. campus, I think. And it's very hard. That's why cults work really well, because it's very hard to undo learned traits and um ideas. And so when something is set upon you as as an idea or as a belief system. That's why people will stick to it, even if they find out the truth, because they're like so hell bent on no, well, this is this is my identity, this is what I know, this is right. all I ever believe, um, and that's that's where it can be hard for people to. So I think if you're just a little more open minded and 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 not too set in any one set of beliefs, unless mm-hmm. like you know, I'm I'm not saying that goes for everything, but just being a little open to knowing that change, be the change you want to see, you know. Absolutely. Just, Absolutely. Means having to change the way you yeah. like, I, and I've, I've had it. I've had it. I've, I've been religious and then not. I've, uh, mm-hmm. to be, a, a you know, I wasn't a plant-based eater than I was or am. And, and so I, I love the way in my life that I've, had such polar opposites in everything, been mm-hmm. through the good, been through the bad. And I think when you are somebody who can communicate with people or minister to people, even through song, that it comes from a place of knowing. You know, I've been this side, I've been this side, I've been here, so I fully can empathize. Right. And so I don't, you know, because if you only know one thing, then you can't understand. It's like a therapist needs to have gone through anxiety in order to maybe heal somebody with anxiety. Because mm-hmm. how how can you possibly, you know, I've never given birth, so I wouldn't be able to connect with a mother who may have given birth. Right. Because I have been through a lot of mental health, uh, you know, um, a lifestyle. So like. I can connect with people on that level or through trauma or through different things. And so I think it's beautiful. That's why the bad times serve just as good as the good, because you can connect with people. That's how we learn. Unfortunately, (laughs) we have to to learn through the bad stuff. Yeah. But uh, that's why in those times, it's even more, uh, it's, it's, it's of utmost importance to really lean in to knowing that it's serving you. You may not see it right there, and then trust me, there are times I'm I'm like I'm like oh my god, like why, like why, why is this happening right now? Why is this not happening right now? But then you have to just go, okay, thank you, you got it, you understand, and then you will see it. Mm-hmm. But no, it can be years later, it can be days later, it can be hours later, it can be minutes later. You never know because it's not your clock, so. Uh, that that's a huge statement right there yeah <laughs> i've never said it that way actually it's not your clock but it isn't uh you know um we are not in control as much mm-hmm. as we love to think we are and um, 
you know, we can manipulate as much as we want. We can do things and, and think we can, but really um, you just got to just let go of the reins a little and uh, fully trust and surrender to knowing that it's 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 going to be what it has to be, <laughs> you know. Well, I want to um, I want to thank you for doing this. Uh, I'm very thankful that we finally, after years, connected and got this together. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, so glad. Got to come out in 2022 and see you play. Yeah, please do. Plenty of opportunities. So. Yes, yes, there is. Yeah, there is. And we got to do this again for uh, something else in the future that you're releasing. Probably this uh, next video. Yeah. Or... Yeah. It's going to be such a special one. Oh, so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so where should we send everybody, though, to find out about the music, the videos, the, all the shows you're playing? Yeah, I always tell people, and I can see it underneath here, um, is my website, which I run myself. So any uh, complaints, just, you know, they go to me. <laughs> no, but um, Claire Cunningham... C L A R E uh, Cunningham Music.com. And there I've made it as user friendly as possible uh, with every single link that you can possibly imagine. The link tree is on there too because uh, that will give you a one stop shop. But all my merchandise, all my music, all the news, all the blogs, all the about me and stuff like that, that's pretty much all on there. If I'm missing anything, please somebody let me know. But I Pretty much. And show wise, I typically put that on my Instagram. Um, and I think that filters in on into Twitter and Facebook. They're nicely connected. So I don't have to go on every platform. Absolutely. Uh, for me. Um, but yeah, I would just say Claire Cunningham at music.com. A one stop shop for getting what you need, hopefully. <laughs> there you go. And also bombersandsleeves.com. Let's throw that out there too. Yes. Yes, Bombers and Sleeve. Actually, if anybody is interested and you like their apparel, which I can fully, fully attest to it being awesome. I do my own. I cut up my T-shirts and stuff like that. Uh, I love them a little bit bigger. Um, so I wear them to the gym and airport and stuff like that. Um, but uh, if you do want a discount, you can get 10% off with uh, promo code. I sound like such a like crazy. <laughs> promo code Claire. At checkout. <laughs> nice. No, but honestly, you're serving the lads a real, um, a real. You know, they're they're amazing. Um, Steve and Kevin, and they are just trying like I am, and like we all are in this industry, um, to you know, do good for the world. So you'll be doing good by supporting the boys, and oh, and the new winter beanies, they're awesome. They're yes, they are. And I think uh, we're going to need them this weekend for the snow. God, this weather is killing me. I'm like, sorry, what? but I did go in my cold water. I don't know if anybody, <laughs> you, if you want to watch a crazy video, uh, I was in 38 degree water uh, at the fitness center over here. So I do my cold water plunging every day, but my God, in the snow. Wow. Like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> it's so good to you. <laughs> Better you than me. <laughs> I'll do it for you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Please do. Yeah, Claire, thanks again for doing this and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Absolutely. Well, listen, stay safe. Thanks for having me. It's been Absolutely. Awesome. Nobody got bored. <laughs> and, and maybe now this time, Guernica will Google and find this interview where you talk about her. Yes. And she, <laughs> by the way, please do go and support Thunder Mother. And, you know, that girl can sing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no perfect. Like, honestly, she is like this. She's got that soul. Just she is a true badass, actually. And uh, I was delighted. Like, you know, it's it's because it, that style of music really does need a good, like, you know, a good powerhouse behind it and she definitely has it so um and kudos to her i know she's gone through a lot health wise as well so mm -hmm. I'm, you know i i wish nothing but success for them and so yeah so big love and hopefully they'll get over here and oh, imagine if they did a show yeah right they have to would that be? i'm like i'm in the front row like yeah <laughs> so cool. that's awesome yeah
Claire, thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon. Much love, and thank you, and stay safe, everybody. You too. Take care. (laughs) Bye.